Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we have Regan Mackay, who is the head of Smart Encrypt for Write. So welcome to the jam, Regan. Yeah, thanks for having me. No worries at all. So we're going to be talking a lot about Ripe's Smart Encrypt offering, which is a file encryption product. Um, so could you shed some light on what is meant by file encryption and why businesses use it? Sure. So uh, file encryption is, uh, it's very underutilized under technology. It's a, it's a case of actually encrypting files as essentially scrambling files to a unreadable format. So we use the process of encryption. It sounds really complex, uh, but essentially it's almost like putting a lock on a file. And the only way you can access that file is to actually have the key to either lock it or unlock it. So that's the process of encryption. Um, and really it is a significant technology that is around preventing unauthorized access to the, the data inside of files. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so could you give me a small history lesson of how did Smart Encrypt come about and how does it work generally? Sure. So um, I developed Smart Encrypt um, as a, it came out of a need to actually encrypt my own information. So a few years back, I was actually developing another software application and I was developing high value IP and really what um, came out of, you know, having this value in, in my data was I had a lot of it. Um, I had a team of 12 developers in Australia. There was a, I guess there's a shortage of quality developers in, in the country. And my developers were always getting contacted by their friends saying, hey, come and work for us. And so I was always worried that a developer would leave my organization and essentially take a copy of my IP with them. So I started looking for an encryption. I realized that encryption is essentially, you know, the ultimate technology. If you want to pre prevent someone from getting access to the data inside of a file, you encrypt it. So that took me down the journey of actually trying to buy an encryption product for my small business. And really what I discovered was, uh, File encryption, although it's an amazing technology and it's incredibly effective, it really is a difficult technology to use with the products that were on the market. I was really disappointed with the quality and I guess the ease of use for encryption, particularly in the small to medium business space. File encryption is widely used in enterprise because they know they need this technology. And I guess they've been prepared to, to deal with the burden that, that goes amongst using that type of technology and i guess from a software designer point of view i looked at the software and i was horrified from the the end user experience and the uh, and the it administrators experience it was effectively the products in the market i just thought were absolute garbage and i thought you know i can do better and i understood from the it perspective that it was difficult uh, to actually administer the product and also from the end user experience, you know, using encryption was you don't want to be encrypting files and having to put a password in every time that you open them. You don't want to have to move your files into a virtual file system. So I think, you know, the user experience it, it was too difficult to, work, to actually use encryption with my team to actually have multiple people work on the same data set. Um, the user experience, the workflow changes were just too difficult. So really the opportunity came about to actually develop a technology that was actually going to, you know, make this technology usable. And I think, you know, where it's really important is for businesses to actually have that control and ownership of their data. So the use case for Smart Encrypt is for organizations that deal with, you know, high value IP like I was, or sensitive and confidential data. So really, I guess, you know, your, your legal firms, your medical firms, your um, accountants, anyone in the financial services, anyone with a financial services license, um, just, you know, the organizations where it's gonna be really detrimental to, to their business if um, that data was to leave their custody, you know, and they've got compliance requirements around it. So, um, yeah, I guess that was the, the, the reason I decided, decided to actually develop the product was just to make this really incredible technology uh, easy to use. So I really focused on, on the ease of use um, 
from both the IT uh, perspective and from the end user perspective. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Make things invisible. The end user doesn't want to have to be, be aware they're working with encryption. It has to be transparent or invisible to them. And I think gotcha. it's a fantastic job on that. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned before both SMBs and enterprise. So what, which of these is Smart Encrypt best suited for? Um, well, there's, there's actually a, a fairly large amount of products in the enterprise space. Now they're quite complex and expensive. I really did design Smart Encrypt to actually make this technology um, usable for, you know, from from very small micro businesses, but there's no reason why it can't scale up to a, to a actual, a large business. So, you know, I think, you know, a prime case that I would say is a, a use case and, a, and an ideal setting would be, you know, I visited my accountant, um, that particular um, business is run by two directors. Um, they have uh, 15 staff and I would imagine the company is probably about 20 years old, these guys, uh, have got a successful business and you know for for them they're working with really confidential uh, information and i think the you know what i when i spoke to them about this i said look cybersecurity changes so rapidly and um they've got to be aware of of the dangers that that they face by you know creating and, and storing this information so you know they weren't really aware of the need for encryption so you know, I had a chat with them and I really explained that I guess probably the biggest concern for them as a business with the data they're working with is um, to be able to actually, you know, control that information and be able to prevent access wherever the data might travel. And I guess a major concern after having a chat was, was ransomware for them as a, as a business. They deal with obviously a lot of information that they do not want to see out in the public domain and ransomware has changed its behavior from being a technology that was all about encrypting information to being a technology now or, or a, pro a threat about not only just going through and encrypting information they've really changed the ransomware gangs have changed their behavior to focus in on data exfiltration and so what ransomware is now the trend is is not just to encrypt the information because businesses have been able to mitigate that by restoring that information from backup and of course they don't need to pay so the ransomware gangs have just simply evolved like you know a lot of threats in cybersecurity have and they've changed the strategy to data exfiltration and by Stealing the data, the ransomware gang has a lot more information about who the victim is. So, you know, that victim, once upon a time, they had no idea who it was. Um, you would simply, if you couldn't recover from backup, you would make contact. And if you provided your domain name, they would have a, a glimpse of who you were. But in most cases, um, ransomware attacks were hands off keyboard attacks and they didn't know who the victim was. So, you know, they asked for like a $10,000. Uh, you know, standard, you know, pay $10,000 will give you the decryption key. Times have changed and, and what now with data exfiltration is the ransomware gang has a lot more leverage. So they, you know, they're collecting the data and they're able to identify who the victim is, what industry the victim is in. You know, they can identify by looking at the data, who are the customers, who are the competitors, what compliance requirements the organization um you know has to adhere to and also you know what and just what publications or journalists would be interested in writing an article about that particular breach so by having a copy of the data they are now instead of asking for ten thousand dollars like in my accountants example that business is probably worth you know it's in the millions of dollars these guys have run a successful business they've worked hard um you know 20 odd staff um, you know, that business is worth millions of dollars and the ransomware gang will actually value that business and they will say, well, you know, it's probably worth a few million dollars. So we might ask for a $500,000 ransom and you might be able to negotiate that down to two or $300,000, but that's what they're now doing. And of course, if you don't pay that ransom, what they're doing is they're actually sending out um, or threatening to publish that information. And they don't just publish all of that data they've collected um, onto leak sites, they're also sending download links to all of your customers. 
Uh, they're also sending it to your competitors. They're sending it to industry regulators and journalists that might be interested in writing a publication about that. It's really about maximum damage to your reputation and your trust with your customers and your ability to generate work going forward. So therefore you have no choice but to pay. So for you know, small to medium businesses in particular, this is business destroying stuff. This, is, this event is either going to destroy the business or put a, a, a serious impact on the quality of life of the, the company owners and the ability for that business to, to grow. So it's really about small to medium businesses the product is absolutely perfect for, but there's no reason why it can't scale through to enterprises. You know, it's being built in a way that as your business grows, Smart Encrypt will grow with it. No problem at all. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I got one final question for you, Regan. Um, if a business was interested in Smart Encrypt, what you guys offer, um, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Well, we sell uh, Smart Encrypt through the IT channel, but we will also happily work with um, businesses that that. Um, don't work with an IT provider. So, you know, if you're a business um, and you want to, and you're interested in Smart Encrypt, you can simply send us an, um, an email at info at smartencrypt.com. And we'll be able to put you in touch with an IT provider that can provide and install Smart Encrypt for your business. Perfect. Cool. Well, um, yeah, that's it for today's interview. Thanks again for coming on and joining me today, Regan. All right, thank you.